Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to The Why Show. I am your host, Adina Wingfield, for today's segment. Uh, we'll have Trent Smith and Gail Daffler also with us from Goodwill Easter Seals, Miami Valley. Also joining us via Zoom are Justine Bauer of Goodwill Easter Seals, Tamara Cantrell, and Michael Mann, both with Yuvadop. They will all be available to facilitate during the chat. But before we begin our segment, we'd like to share with you all, this is a judgment-free zone. We are having a conversation today that helps all of us thrive as we get older. And this is also brought to you by the New Jersey Prevention Network. Today's episode is episode three, valuing cultural and generational diversity. This is such a wonderful topic and we're excited to bring it to you today. For our agenda and activities, we'll have some expected outcomes where we examine diversity among seniors. We're gonna define diversity, expanded understanding of culture and diversity. We also want to go over personal experiences with diversity. We'll share a little bit with you all later. We want to understand how our identifications impact our interactions. Mm -hmm. In addition, we'll talk about strangers in a strange land to help us better understand diversity of seniors. In the end, we're going to challenge assumptions and make ourselves more aware of assumptions about various cultural groups. Our purpose today is to explore ways in which we are a diverse group and develop appreciation for our cultural and generational diversity. So we're gonna talk about expanding understanding of the concepts of culture and diversity, improved ability to name our own cultural identifications, how they impact our values, and the ways we interact with others. We also talk about better understanding of diversity of older adults and the unique needs of different types of older adults. And then we'll talk about the heightened awareness of the assumptions people commonly make about various cultural groups and how they affect interaction. But before we do that, we have a couple of announcements. And so I wanna turn it over to Gail Daffler. Hi everybody. Um, I just wanna invite all of our community members to attend the upcoming DEA Take Back Day. It'll be April the 24th. Our Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley, we will be hosting an event on our grounds, um, which is located at 660 South Main Street in Dayton, Ohio. We have several organizations that will be participating in our spring, it's called the Spring Fling, and they'll be handing out um, fun, at, fun activities for kids and also just, um, just resource bags for our community members. We also have the Dayton Food Bank there as well um, that will be handing out food to our community members. If you have a food bank card, please bring that. And if you don't, please bring a photo ID and at least one proof of re re residency. Um, the organizations that are being re um, represented at the event will be Umadop of Dayton, South Community, East End Community Services, Oak Street Health, our FOA, which means the friends and family of addic people in addiction, um, our GROW team of Dayton, Ohio, um, Bright View, Care Source, and the Artemis Center. Uh, we, uh, the prevention team here at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley just wants to thank all the organizations for participating and for supporting another great event. And we hope to, we hope to. Um, we hope that everybody is able to bring their medication, clean out their, um, their um, medicine chest, um, look for unused medication, outdated medication, bring those to the event. Um, the last big event that we had was in October of 2019 where we disposed of over 11,000 pounds of medication just in Montgomery County alone. We hope to break that record. So. Any, it could be a small amount of medication, or it could be any size medication, a large amount. Please bring that and, and enjoy the day that we have. Hopefully it's gonna be a nice day outside. Great, thank yeah. you Gail for that update on DEA Take Back Day. Mm -hmm. And now we'll turn it over to Trent as we talk about defining diversity in our activity one. 
Absolutely. So um, we are today are defining uh, diversity in this activity. Um, and no age group is more variable in personal background, in physical abilities, in personal lifestyles, financial capabilities, or social needs than today's older adults. Yet, however, everyone over 60 and 65 gets lumped together um, in some same category. So in this activity, what we want to do is identify the attributes uh, we share in, in common and, you know, those that contribute to our, di our diversity, okay? So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I, um, well, first of all, I want to make sure you guys have pencil and paper ready for us or pen and paper ready because um, we're going to do an activity in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to read this quote that comes from um, our, uh, our the, the program that we have here. Um, and it's called Diversity Is. So diversity is a range of differences that include gender, race, ethnicity, and age. It also includes differences that are not visible, like education, professional background, functional area of expertise, sexual orientation, and religion. The way countries view diversity depends on the cultural values of the people and the range of diversity in the population and the attitudes towards these differences. So I just love this quote. I just think it's a really good quote that, that kind of pulls things together. Um, but um, I, I guess, you know, I, I, it's, it's such a big quote. Are there anything um, that stands out? You know, maybe, Gail, do you have anything in that that really stood out to you? I do, I do. Um, one thing that stood out for me was the countries. We, countries and, and people from different countries have different, like, say, traditions, different values. Um, and that might be in, in, within each culture within a country. There's different traditions and different values. And, and, what, and, and we, when we think about that, that can be a little overwhelming, thinking about how diverse all that can be and having an understanding for that. But what I like at the end of that sentence is the attitudes towards these differences. So if you have an attitude maybe where you're open to understanding and that you're willing to, to, um, to lead that conversation with open ears and an open heart, I think that either you're, you're the acceptance there and then the acceptance for maybe some things that you have that are different right. might also be reciprocated from that person. Right. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, there's so many other di dimensions of diversity. Um, can you think of some that, that come to mind for you? Oh, my goodness. Well, first thing I'd like to say is diversity is not just black and white. You know, in this climate we're living in, it, there's a lot of division going on, but there's so much inclusion. But when we think about diversity, uh, education stands out to me and how, how um, many people have decided to go to college and many people didn't. You know, there are technical programs that people go to apprenticeships and that's just fine. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, college, some, it's not one size fits all. And so that's the part that stands out to me. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I, I just, I love how, um, just the feeling in this room is that we embrace them and you know, yeah. and celebrate the diversity. Um, uh, and it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to learn about different things and different people. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. um, and so the activity that we're doing today is called the Similarity and Differences Wheel. So what I'd love for you guys to do at home is uh, go ahead and get out a piece of paper. Um, like I said, and, and what I want you to do is I want you to draw a small circle on, on the, um, the page that is big enough to write some things in here, right? And then a bigger circle around it. And um, so we're going to fill in some of these areas, I think, and try to show how uh, uh, we have different, so, such difference in, there's such difference in, in diversities amongst us, but at the same time, there's so many similarities. Um, so we're gonna, let's go ahead and start with similarities. Um, are there some sim similarities that, um, what do we all have in common? What, mm. is, what do we all have that's the same? What's oh. the same? You know, when I think about commonality, the number one thing I think about is love. We all wanna feel love, don't we? 
Yeah. And uh, one more, uh, respect. Yeah. Respect, that is common, that's universal, mm -hmm. to want to feel respected. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and when I think about that, Trent, I think about we all have it. We all have a sense of belonging, whether that's with our, our family of origin or whether that's with a group of people um, that might be our neighbors. You know, it could be somebody we might um, live near, we go to school with, we work with. Um, right. But having that sense of belonging, I think, is universal for everyone. And, and also, kind of what D Adina was talking about with education, we all have a sense of like we want to learn. You know, mm -hmm. whether that's we learn from a book or we learn from school or we learn from each other, you know, but, but we all, we all, it could be in probably our things that we want to learn about are a lot different, but we all have that sense where we do want to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Um, and I, you know, I just, you know, when we think of the similarities, there is so much we have in common um, um, that sometimes our, I think our differences get in the way. And um, and so uh, you know, let's take a look at some of those some of those differences that we have. Mm -hmm. Some what makes us different? What makes us different from each other? Mm -hmm. well, I'll start. Trent. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, what about our health? You know, mm -hmm. we look at different health ranges mm -hmm. uh, with people um, finances. You mm -hmm. know, some people are on fixed incomes. And some mm. people have plenty of money. I wish I was <laughs> in that group, but someday, someday. So, um, you know, and even religion, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, Gail? Uh, and and um, some of us, oh, age is a difference, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, and some of us can be older, but they can be young at heart. You know, some of us could be, you know, younger and very grounded. So uh -huh. there's lots of diversity there with age. Mm -hmm. um, right with abilities uh -huh. so um, when I think about that it maybe we we get around in different ways maybe we see things in different ways we hear things in different ways mm -hmm. we talk in different ways so when I think about that that that's huge it's very colorful um, and also um, like sexual orientation that's something that um, you know people have dif differences in that as well mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, what, I have another one that stands out here. It's support, yeah. like a support system. Some people have a huge support system, large families mm -hmm. and all of that, and other people maybe um, have been adopted or just mm -hmm. kind of step out into the world as a single person and, and do what they, mm -hmm. and still get the mm -hmm. job done. But there's, there's a support system difference that we should look at as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as, mm -hmm. you know, as we grow older, I think a lot of times that our support systems change. You know, um, sometimes, you know, children move away or, you know, sometimes we do, you know, we, we lose the support of our family, our parents or someone might pass away and we, we don't have that in our lives. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, a big difference um, that we ha all have. Um, you know, we just hope that that support comes from a different place for everyone, right? right. Yeah. Our, our homes are all different, right? Yeah. Yes, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we could live in an apartment, we could have, you know, have a larger home, we could, it could be in an urban, it could be, mm -hmm. like, say, um, out in the country. Um, yeah. So that's right. something where there's lots of differences there for our homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, you know, when, when we're, we talked about, you know, we talked about education earlier. Um, and how that can be, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of our, our drive to learn. But our different levels of education, people have, uh, people have sought out higher levels of, educa of education. Some people haven't. Um, um, some people just learn on the job and just know things. So, um, and that's one of those hidden things also that a lot of times that, you know, we don't know about people, what their education is or anything. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes that comes into we, those assumptions that we're going to talk about later. Sometimes mm -hmm. that will come into that as well. So, um, yeah. um, it's, and when I think of that trend, I think of it, there, there's different ways to learn things. So sometimes mm -hmm. um, somebody might seek seek out, like say, um, a diploma, mm -hmm. and sometimes people seek out different ways to learn the same information. Yeah. And and it's their drive, you know. It, so it's it's interesting right. where that can go. Right. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and as we get older, 
we certainly can learn. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, you can teach an old dog new tricks. You sure can. I, you know, right. I went back to school <laughs> when I was when I was older. You know, and 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 got more certifications and still taking classes now. And um, so I think that you know, education is something that um, is again, it can be. It's so universal, but at the same time, um, you know. You can you can try new things and you can learn new things, you know, even at an older age. And I like so. what you said about that. You told a story about that. It was a different time in your life where most college students would go, you know, maybe fresh out of high school. You went mm -hmm. and you were. Did you say you were already married? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In fact, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I keep going to school, but no, I got married. Um, it, you know, fairly fairly young. I was I was almost twenty two, mm -hmm. um, but I was I got. I didn't go back to school and finish my degree until I think I graduated when I was 29 or 30, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so that's, um, I was one of those little older people in school, so anyhow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can learn. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, it. Definitely. Definitely. And you're, you got me thinking about our Zoom and all of our technology that really <sighs> fit. Hello Zoom viewers, and we're, we're thankful that you're here with us today. That's something I know that I didn't know what Zoom was a year ago. And so yeah. mm -hmm. learning how to use that and how to share things on Zoom, yeah. learning how to make a PowerPoint and then how to share that on Zoom, it's huge. And so um, being open to that, and I know we're all going through like say, um, just it's, it's a hurdle that we're, that we're, uh, that we're, um, that we're trying to get, um, get over with learning technology, but I, I am impressed with everybody who is attempting to learn, figure out how to use that Facebook, how do you view things on Facebook Live, yes. you know, how, you know that is huge, and we're 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 making great changes. Yes, and I hope you're having so much fun mm -hmm. with FaceTime. If you have grandchildren or anything mm -hmm. like that, I've been hearing <laughs> great things about that being such a new experience for many people, and, right. and, and really enjoying that. So. Mm -hmm. FaceTime. Absolutely. So talking about personal experiences, could we move and, and share some more with that, with diversity? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay, so now we've talked about what diversity is all about. We will look at, in it as on a more personal level. So um, I want you to think about your personal experiences. How has diverse, diversity affected you? What have you learned from it? What have you been challenged by? Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn to our team. And Ms. Trent, I'm turning to you first. Okay. What are some personal experiences that you've had with diversity? How has it shaped you into the person you are today? You know, um, I, I am a military kid. And we, you know, we stationed, we got stationed a lot of places and we got moved around quite a bit. Um, I was lucky enough um, that at one point we were able to go and live um, in overseas in Europe. Um, and during those few years, I was, I was still in elementary school and um, I got to travel and I got to see other cultures. Um, I got to see, hear other languages. Um, you know, unique things. I mean, you know, how we, you know, we talk about, you know, our families and we, how we live is, is unique for all of us. Um, in some cultures, they would have um, completely different meal schedules. Like their big meal would be in the middle of the day, where ours is at night. Um, sometimes we would be at one place and uh, like on a, like a vacation and everything closed down mm -hmm. in like from from like noon until like seven or eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then everything opened up again. So, you know, no one did any shopping or going out to the store during that time. So um, all those things were really uh, enriching experiences for me. Um, and then we, we did move back to the United States, which was wonderful, but that was um, a little unstable when it, cause I would go from school to school. So I was in three different schools in three different years, and one of those, um, I mean, I was down in the south, and then I moved up here, and so it was really completely different cultures, even within our country. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I was, I was uh, the new kid, and um, had to learn kind of what was going on in the classrooms, and you know, kind of how to meet people. So um, that was uh, uh, a lot of what I was how I was, how I grew up and how I, I was, I was raised with all those experiences. Mm -hmm. how, 
How do you feel that diversity challenged you to shape you? Like, what are some things that you learned from that experience? Oh, um, well, uh, you know what? I was the new kid, mm -hmm. a lot. I was the new kid. Um, and I think it made me maybe more accepting of that new face and, and uh, it made me more outgoing um, and uh, willing to meet other people. Um, I think that maybe shapes some of my personality. Uh, makes me want to get out and, and be with other people and meet other people. Um, you know, that was a, yeah, that was a, it was a challenge. Um, but I think that a, a good lesson for me is that, is that, you know, welcoming that new person in and, and, um, um, and it also helped me, I think, um, maybe be more open mm -hmm. to other, other people, other opportunities and other, other experiences and, and cultures. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Trent. Oh, you're welcome. So, Zoom participants, I challenge you to write in the chat, how has diversity shaped you and what have you learned from that? So please put that in the chat. Next, we're gonna go to Miss Adina. And Miss Adina, what, can you share some of, the, some, um, some of your experiences with diversity and how has it shaped you? Well, uh, just as an African-American person with some strong Native American roots, I uh, grew up on the west side of Dayton, went to public schools, and uh, just all the kids looked like me, and uh, lots of poverty coming up, but also some opportunities where I became middle class as a family, and um, <clears throat> was able to participate in things like Girl Scouts and church, youth group, and things like that. And those opportunities led me to open up to different groups of people and uh, my mother really focused on education and making sure that we did our homework and um, put us in band. You know, I played flute and sang. So all of those things helped to uh, just share in the experience of others, uh, push, pushing forward. Um, in my college years, end up in the medical field, and that helped me at the hospital. I, I joined into a diversity committee as I worked with uh, nurses of very uh, various backgrounds and doctors of various backgrounds and that just helped to shape me even better to um, learn that there are so many things that we have in common as people that we need to look for and sit down and have healthy conversations so that we can have better relationships. So I, I've just had, a, I feel like a broad experience and that helps me to sit here with you all today and do have some courage to even talk in front of people. So I'm just thankful for my journey. Yeah, yeah. so far. It's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'm like that you, you had you had a lot of situations there. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you th feel that you valued over the years of all of your experiences with diversity? You know the m music, <laughs> music, music, because it's a universal language, and, and we all love music or some rhythm um, uh, of any kind that can help us to come together uh, on a common ground. So, I love common mm -hmm. ground, and that is music. So, it's been my favorite thing. I we all love music. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it is universal, it and is. It, it, it's so diverse. And I, I like it being diverse. I like listening to different things. Sometimes my friends just think I'm stuck in the '80s, but you know, <laughs> okay. I like to listen to all kinds of music. So, yes. <laughs> so um, when true. I think about my background, um, I'm like you, Dina. I grew up in um, a small town, and a lot of the faces looked like mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember. Um, um, just to have a few experiences with people of different cultures that would come to our church um, that started to attend our school. And I was very curious. I, was, you just, I wanted to learn more. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned a lot when I finally started going to college. And um, just I remember walking into the first day of, of college and it was like, I'm here. I felt like this sense of relief because I was surrounded by lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds, lots of different, uh, <laughs> um, just lots of different abilities. Um, and that was wonderful to me. It was like, we could have these really open conversations. Um, and I met a really great friend um, one year um, and he shared his experience. He had muscular dystrophy and he could paint, he yeah. could skydive. He's a, he's a motivational speaker right now. And um, 
he enriched my life so much because he would have these open and honest conversations. He would have these difficult conversations, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he was an open book and that helped me to be brave in conversations with other people. Mm -hmm. So he, just his bravery every day that he showed the world was, was um, my, it was, cha it changed my life. And um, just to, just to see everyone there at the school talking about what they value, talking about their personal experiences, and just to, to understand people, that, that was, it came from a different point of view than myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. That really, it, it led me to be a little bit more open, because I, I, I thought I was open, but I wasn't as open, was what I thought I was. <laughs> and yeah. so um, that, that was just, it was a life changing. Is life changing, and of course, Miss Dina, you have changed my life. Oh, you know that was something. Knowing you and mm -hmm. and hearing your story and your viewpoint, your perceptions of things, mm -hmm. that really opened me up even further. So I want you know. So th when I think about like say diversity, it's a lifelong process mm -hmm. of understanding each other, and. and um, trying to learn how we can better get along. That's right. So, yep. mm -hmm. I have developed yeah, a great appreciation for each other and, mm -hmm. and, and mutual respect. Yeah, yeah. it's Absolutely. just so good. Um, and we learn to embrace each other more about celebrating right. our differences, even in the quality, skills, and knowledge and background that we all bring to the table. And when you talk about ability, mm -hmm. I just love that, especially where we work with Goodwill, right. um, with many diverse um, backgrounds and people with abilities disabilities of, of, of various sorts but when you say ability it makes me think of when I became a reader writer at Wright State for um, those who could not take their own notes mm -hmm. and it just was an amazing experience to have friendship with somebody that may not be able to walk but doesn't didn't mean they couldn't think right. they could still think and do but they may not have been able to use their hands and so we cannot assume things about people right. just because they can't do certain things mm -hmm. um, I had friends who were blind that did mm -hmm. math Oh gosh, in their heads so awesomely. So I, it's just some, some great opportunities to meet different people and Absolutely. have great friendships. So that you reminded Absolutely. me of a lot right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just love how we inspire each other. That, yes. that is something just, because yes. it, it triggers a lot of memories. We all have different experiences mm -hmm. and, and, and just having an open, open heart and an open mind to, to them, that, that, yeah. that's what makes the difference. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more personal experiences that you can think of? Um, you know, I just, you know, I just v value the cultural differences around us, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. um, um, you know, just within a within a neighborhood, within a school, and going in and and um, hearing different um, languages spoken. Yeah. Um, or you know, the, smelling the food that you know, just oh my goodness, and the and I just think that the differences um, um, that, like my mother brought into our lives, was um, you know she introduced food. She introduced yeah. lots of different food, and I was eating exotic foods probably for the most part when I was very young, uh -huh. um, and um, I I'm so grateful for that, you know, for. The opportunities to do that, and I try to share that. And you know, I just try to share it with my children, and you know, they share it with their friends and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, I just think um, for me, just um, understanding or, or getting to know other people's cultures mm -hmm. um, is just so rewarding. Mm -hmm. So yeah. true. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about age because. That's something where, when we think about age, and I remember growing up, I used to think, oh, once you hit a certain number, like say 40 or 50, you stop doing certain things. Mm -hmm. And so that is something where, um, it's, you know, I'm 54 right now, and I'm seeing people who are well into their 70s, well into their 80s, they still go to work every day, and they are still vital every day at work. In fact, a lot of them work harder and are quicker at their jobs than some of the younger people. Wow. Just to see people doing really healthy things like dancing, like our friend Michael, who was on one of the other shows, and, and all the sports he's involved with, his mm -hmm. physical activities, just seeing that, and it's so inspirational. Um, whether it's people writing stories, 
you know, volunteering in the community, you know, so when, when um, you're a certain age, that doesn't mean anything. You can still do whatever you put your heart and soul into. Yeah. And, um, and I'm inspired every day by meeting the, the individuals that we get to meet on the job or in the community mm -hmm. who are out there making a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, and we're all making such a difference um, as we age and, and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. But here's, a, here's an exercise I'd like to look mm -hmm. at. There's a slide here with uh, some people on an elevator. Now, everyone, <laughs> this is pre-COVID, okay, for <laughs> sure, because now we know that there probably would only be one person allowed or maybe two on this <laughs> elevator. But this, let's just think back into, I don't know, 2019, the very beginning. Um, so these people are on the elevator, and on the, in this lesson, we're, we're, they're strangers in a strange land, uh, and, and we're all like that sometimes, strangers in a strange land, and we're going to challenge some assumptions. So the theme of this is sometimes we make assumptions based on our beliefs, values, and backgrounds, and we often do it with very little information. Um, however, making assumptions about others is not always helpful and often can lead to misunderstanding. How many out there have ever been in a misunderstanding? Hmm? Sometimes you feel like people are committed and you're like, please stop committing to misunderstanding me. I really want to be your friend. But no, anyway, <laughs> it's okay to laugh in this, in this uh, show. It, it, we have fun. Yep. But in this activity, we will heighten our awareness of how we all make assumptions about others it would allow us to learn to engage in new social settings with an open mind and think of it as an adventure to learn about others that just may appear differently than us. So as we look at this, uh, you know, when we look at that picture, it's just like, what are they thinking? You know, does somebody, maybe somebody's clutching their purse. We don't know. Maybe somebody's like, hurry up and get me off of here. We all think so differently. You know, some people, some people start conversations on elevators. I try not to, but, <laughs> but anyway, because you don't have that long ride, but I do speak to people. And so everybody's different. You have your social butterflies and, and your personalities are all different. But we're going to talk about a challenge here. And I'm going to give this challenge to Gail. Are you ready, Gail? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Going to the chapel. wonder what that's about. So it says your 25-year-old niece, everybody listen, take this on. Your 25-year-old niece has met someone and it's contemplating marriage. You give her advice on what she should do. Oh my gosh. So th this, is, this is my assumptions, right, Miss Dina? This is not actually how I'm gonna think, yeah, is that you, right? Yeah, it's totally up to you. Okay. Yeah, we're, 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 based on your viewpoint, okay. yeah. So this might not be my viewpoint, but these are some assumptions, right? Assumptions, okay. okay. There you go, okay. Let's challenge so uh, an assumption you might have in that situation is, you're too young to get married. Mm. Okay, an um, assumption you might have in that situation would be, are your finances in line? Are you, do you have enough money to get married and to have a house on, you know, with your husband? Uh -huh. um, an assumption would be, and I just did it, uh -huh. would be you're gonna get married to a man. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe you might get married to a woman, right? True. Right. So an assumption you might have in that situation is that they haven't met, they haven't known each other very long. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that could be, those are some of the, the things that people might think. Mm -hmm. And you think that just comes from things you've seen, like maybe with family or just all around you, just some experiences? Right, exactly. Yeah. I, th I think sometimes like you, you learn from your family or you learn from your peers that you're around. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, when I went to, to school, like, I know Trent, you, get, you said you got married when you were younger, yeah. but there was an assumption that if you got married when you were young, like, it was like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't thought of in, mm -hmm. in a positive way. So that was an yeah. assumption that people had. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and I, and I, so I, you know, I think of that situation, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you question that, and I think, well, okay, I was 21, right? And, I just about ready to turn 22. I was almost 22 when I got married. Wow. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, when you look at someone, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they did have their act together. Maybe, you know, I guess from my personal experience, it's like, okay, you know, maybe they are good. You know, maybe, you know, maybe they've, you know, just gotten through school and they're ready to get, you know, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of kids have graduated from college or something like that, or maybe mm -hmm. gotten you know some kind of degree or into a job. 
um, after high school and they're they're settled and um, you know and I and I would be um, I, I don't know if I would question it so much but maybe that's just from a personal preference mm -hmm. Good. now I have children I have daughters too so I'm not sure uh -huh. <laughs> now, so she says, well, I know them, well, and you know, it depends no, no, on the no. person. <laughs> it's so true. So I look at my own situation, like I, I got married on my birthday, strangely, but yeah. I was 25 that day, and thinking back, I was so young, thinking about where I am now in my early mm -hmm. 40s, going, oh, I may, you know, maybe I could have waited a little longer, but, you know, it's been 15 years, so we did okay. But yeah, so yeah. but but you 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 know at 25 there are lots of things to think about about where you are. But that's from my perspective. Some people you know have already been mature. You know at 16 they were ready to go then. You never right. know. It depends on the culture, mm -hmm. right? right? The belief system. So right. a lot of lot of different cultures get married way sooner. All right. Anything else on that, ladies? Well, and there's usually a lot of celebration around um, you know a, a proposal. Uh -huh. um, so. That's something that that's that's assumed. Like people, I think people assume that that'll be the the, the received in a positive way. Oh, tradition. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. a tradition. Yes. The mm -hmm. man should ask the woman. Hmm. Not mm -hmm. happening anymore as no, much. Right. So it's mm -hmm. the other way around <laughs> lately. So we kind of open our mind to the different ways, and that that helps us to receive culture and and generational differences. Because somebody in the old, older generation say, I, "No way. He better." Mm -hmm. He better ask you. Mm -hmm. So it, it just depends on who they are and how they think. That's Let's right. go to another example. It, <laughs> we're going to flip this. Uh, Trent, your 70-year-old 70 grandmother has met someone and is contemplating marriage. You give her advice on what she should do. All right. Again, this can be coming from an assumption, not necessarily my own views. I like that. I like how you put that. Yeah. But. Um, you know, there's there could be an assumption that um, they they're just not they're not really thinking straight, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe you know why why would you you're all settled in your life and why would you want to get married? And um, I think that you know we talked about people being on fixed incomes and you know maybe you think well you know is, do they have enough money with the two of them you know getting together and. You know, I don't, you know, wh how would that disrupt their life? How would it disrupt maybe, um, you know, this is the grandmother. How is that going to, how will a new person, um, you know, uh, alter the relationship maybe between, you know, grandmother and granddaughter or great-grandchildren, you know. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, maybe that's maybe not so celebrated like we were talking about mm -hmm. is someone mm -hmm. getting older and getting married. I guess. Well, and when I think about that situation, an assumption, well, actually, some people could respond by being really happy, you know, because maybe there's a story behind that, you know, and um, that is something where um, some people might think that there's a reason behind it, mm -hmm. but, but um, it could be a positive reason, it could be a negative reason, but um, that is something that there could be some assumptions about, like, why are you getting married? But I think sometimes people would just be like, all right, you know, because I think there's assumption about like love and about caring that it kind of ends at a certain age, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think um, people might be really celebrating that, like you have, this is a positive, great thing in your life. Because I think uh, the assumption might be because love stops at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Well, we know better, don't we? Mm -hmm. right. So yeah, love is throughout our life. That's true. So, That's so true. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to another example right. and see how we do. Gail, I'm going to start with you again. Okay. okay. <laughs> you have been bowling for years. All right. Your 14-year-old <laughs> neighbor says he wants to learn how to bowl. How do you respond? Again, he's 14. 14. Okay. My assumption is my my um. This is not what I really think. So my assumption is my 14-year-old neighbor neighbor has played football and stopped. He's played baseball and stopped. He's played track and stopped. So is he really gonna follow through on bowling? Oh. You know, so that's an assumption right there for a young person where 
they're just exploring their life, right? And so they're just trying to figure out who they are and what they're about. So I think there's a lot of stopping and starting with for young people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I don't think that they're given that like room to grow because, um, you know, they want to figure out things and, and it's okay if they stop, start and stop things. Right. So that's good. Yeah. It's kind of good to remember when you were young and kind of what you, you thought of. That would be a great mm -hmm. way to meet in the middle and remember mm -hmm. so that you could relate. Yeah. How about right. you? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, you know I, I think it's wonderful that, that they would want to spend time. I'm making an assumption here mm -hmm. that um, if you've been bowling for years, maybe you're older, maybe you're in your 60s and you've been, this is what you do. And, and maybe this uh, young gentleman is excited to spend time with them mm -hmm. and wants to absorb, you know, all the new experiences and things like that. Um, I'm not, you know, it, it. there's so much information that's missing that mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah. But people do make assumptions and that's, yeah. the, that's the difficult thing is that they would judge, you know, it's like, well, what's that, what's that little boy? Yeah. Little you kids. Know, what's that young kid yeah. doing, doing hanging out with them? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the assumption would be lo lo um, 14 year olds don't bowl. What are you doing here? Right. right. Uh, Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. it's true. right. So those of you on Zoom, you know, think about the assumptions that you may have made in these activities, in, in this uh, these last few questions. And I have one more, but I'm going to ask. Uh, but just think about that as we go along about how you would react mm -hmm. and some of the things mm -hmm. you could change even with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go on a new hobby. Trent. You have been bowling for years. And your 80-year-old mother says she wants to learn how to bowl. How do you respond? Well, y you know what? Oh, th this is so mixed because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from a, um, you know, even from a personal space that with my, my parents, I would be wonderfully happy if my parents or my, you know, or, you know, would come out and, and do activities. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be great. I would worry. Yeah. I would have some, some concerns about, you know, bowling is an activity. It's, it's not playing cards. It's movement. It's, you know, that's, that, that's a concern. But, um, yeah. um, you know, my, just, I think maybe, maybe an assumption is that, is that, you know, good, get out there and go. Yeah, get out you there know, and go. Get out there and go. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Gail? How would oh. you take that? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so if I, I have my mom is still active and does great things, I would be really happy if she wanted to go bowling um, or to do any kind of physical activity. I think that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. You might think about maybe some health conditions like what Trent would say. Mm -hmm. um, or you might there I'm sure she's been told that she can't do things because she's a certain age or she has a certain health condition um, you know and I um, and I'm sure somebody might say to her mom this is all assumptions here so um, I say to her about um, that you can't do that because um, maybe you, you could go wee bowling but not like you know in the um, in mm -hmm. the big lanes right mm -hmm. um, um, or they might challenge like her and they might say, well, you have to use a five pound ball, ball instead of the, one of the bigger balls, you know, um, because you're, maybe you're not strong enough. Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, and one thing that I, you know, that's one thing where people can figure out what, they, what they're capable of doing. But I think there's a lot of assumptions, like you're gonna hurt yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you're, not, you're not able to, to do that because you're a certain age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we'll just use my grandma for this example. Mm -hmm. That particular person that's bowling, uh, she's driven um, meals on wheels to people, uh, you know, up through age 81. Right. And so um, she could probably bowl pretty fine, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just assume sometimes the unknown. We don't know. And we make assumptions about people that are often wrong or made mm -hmm. simply by observing people instead of getting to know them. That's the biggest part. Um, even th on Zoom, like having good conversations. So put in the chat, you know, some of the things you would think to, to say, mm -hmm. to get to know someone. Um, don't let the unknown keep you from engaging in the community, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Make new people feel welcome in your community. 
So I hope you all feel welcome in this presentation and, and what we're sharing with you. Um, yeah, we're all in the same boat here. Yeah. And so we're all learning and growing at different different stages. Um, so how how did it feel? I mean, how did that? Um, how did you like that uh, exercise? It, well, it made me challenge my own assumptions. I started, especially when I started thinking about a few things um, different than what I thought of before. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to actually do this activity several times because I think then mm -hmm. you, you would uncover some other assumptions that you might have because I did that because we were going through practice and, I, and then I thought of some other things in, in right. some of the areas. Oh, yeah. right. So... I think that just being aware and being open to hearing other people's viewpoints and uh -huh. that, mm -hmm. that could change how you think about even how you think about yeah. certain things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll ask this question, what are like roadblocks to positive communication? Uh -huh. I mean, does anybody have anything on that? What's a oh, roadblock? Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, the, the fear of the unknown, maybe the fear of, of, of what they don't, people don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and the you know, and not uh, not wanting to ask the questions to clarify, uh -huh. to get through that assumption. You know, um, um, you know, maybe assuming that um, a certain you know family would not be doing that, or a certain age wouldn't be doing that, or age wouldn't be doing that. So I think that um, one of the 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 Encourage to ask those questions yes. and, and to um, use your curiosity and know that it's okay to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you got me thinking, Trent, I think sometimes people fear being wrong uh -huh. or like fear hurting somebody mm. from their actions or their words. Mm -hmm. And I think that that could be a roadblock that some people might put up because um, that might be a really hard hard lesson to learn mm -hmm. and um, you know have you know just what could I do better you know and how could I open up my ears more and, and be accepting and loving of yeah. other people you yeah. just said it that was mm -hmm. a thought that crossed my mind was that active listening mm -hmm. if we take the approach of active listening in our nation everywhere that we are thinking strange things or, or hard things, just taking the time to listen mm -hmm. before we respond, mm -hmm. but trying to understand the other person's perspective. I think we can really meet in the middle and find ways to say, well, I know where you're coming from now. Right. Now I understand. Right. And how can we come together and make it better? Right. So this is a great, great um, mm -hmm. lesson. Really, really I love the cultural and generational diversity lesson. I want to talk a little bit about ageism. I know we've touched on mm -hmm. it a little bit and some of the things, but have you experienced it? And I know you talked about technology earlier. I didn't right. know if you want to speak to that or something else. I'll speak to an experience that I had. Um, it was in a job interview where I was actually interviewing um, a couple people um, with a team of that a team that I used to work with in a different county okay. in a different life <laughs> so um, <laughs> and uh, one of the candidates um, looked up at at it was me and an, uh, there was a gentleman he was probably and he was in his 40s I was in my 40s when this occurred and um, she looked at me and said I think I can relate to the kids better because I am closer in age to them, so I think that we'll have more fun with the activities that I, they do with me. And, I'm, mm -hmm. and so um, that I remember sitting there listening to that going, just having a very, um, it, it was a very difficult experience not to react to that because I wanted to, but I was like, I'm here for a reason. and. Um, that is something I think people sometimes they say things and I don't think that they realize how they're being heard mm -hmm. and what those words mean. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. and that's something I think it's it's difficult. And in and, and this in this learning, you know, experience here that we're all dealing with, please let us know if we can say something better because yeah. I'm open to that yeah. because I want to make sure that I'm not you know putting anybody down. Yeah. And I am being loving and caring. That's huge right. for me. Yeah. But that was something that, that's always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Even though that was like 15 years ago when mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. That, that's, that's 
it's real in my mind because mm -hmm. I was just like, this was, it, it felt very intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The positives to that, I'd say, you know, it kind of makes you stronger and helps mm -hmm. you to treat other people better than mm -hmm. the way you were treated, right? right. Some of these right. negative experiences. I right. will share about ageism a little bit. When I was in the medical field, I was a teenager. Not, I was an older, 19. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, the doctors, of course, were 40 and up. And sometimes I experienced uh, maybe someone thinking I didn't or couldn't learn or had a lack of knowledge and it was just my perception but sometimes I, I could feel that and I had to prove myself and I understand that different age groups and different professions they may look at you and say you know in this particular area we have to have this right and you have to do it right the first time so right. there's different elements of, of our, ex our experience or what we're dealing with that we may experience ageism uh, or some sort of uh, feel like a negative uh, response but then that I, I gained understanding as uh, where I am right. I better get it right. I have right. patience to care for, right. so I had to um, level up and step up. Right. But I'll pass it on to you. Uh, well, Trish. you know, um, one of my experiences was um, as I was a stay-at-home mom for many years. So you know, I, um, as I've said, I you know I, I got married and then I went back to school and then I had my children. So, um, so I was working, but then I decided to stay at home. Well then, after you know so many years at home, you think, hmm, mm. who's gonna hire this old pup? Who's gonna hire me when there's all these young kids coming out of school? And and um, uh, so that was that was a fear of mine um, that I was not gonna be able to get a, a a job or the job that you know a job that I really wanted yeah. um, using my degree then. And that was a um, that was a fear of mine, and I was, you know, I got out there and I got into the workforce. And it was it was a little unfounded, I think, mm -hmm. that I, but um, I remember that it it's just that ingrained. Once you get older, you're you know, there's people coming up behind you that might be a little bit, you know, smarter, quicker, whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that 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 was an that was an experience I had. But, um, yeah, and yeah. so you answered this last question that age, ageism can be hurtful. It's yeah. hurtful to others, and so we, it's definitely a, a great time in our lives to just mark uh, a place to watch what we say, mm -hmm. take some careful thought to how we treat one another mm -hmm. with that, with that love, respect, and belonging, so that we can even approach those maybe what they call hard conversations, mm -hmm. which are needed to to meet common ground. It's so true. Those hard conversations, so they're so uncomfortable to have, but we learn so much from them. Mm -hmm. We have a better understanding for one another. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully um, that's something that helps us to grow together. Mm -hmm. um, it, like you said, you said before, it, we have a lot of tough times right now. We're all, you know, it feels like we're being divided. Mm -hmm. But when we have these conversations, hopefully mm -hmm. that brings us together and, and that understanding helps hopefully heals us yes lots mm -hmm. of healing is mm -hmm. needed and so uh, that's a great place to kind of move forward and, and let you know some more about our why show we we do thank you all for watching today but I want to go to Trent really quick that's just going to mm -hmm. tell you more about the episodes coming up yeah and then we'll close out uh, absolutely the wonderful thing about day TV is that they actually um, give you an opportunity to watch these shows um, over and over so we have already uh, live taped our first two shows and now we're completing our third but the wonderful thing is that you can still watch those other shows on day TV and I'm gonna go ahead and give you some of the dates and times or the times of, uh, of in the of in the within the month that you can watch it so um, obviously our live tape is every third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Um, but um, you can also watch our shows that will be played um, every second Wednesday at 10 p.m. So if you're a late night person, you can catch it then. Um, every third Friday at 12 p.m. at noon, right? Um, and then Thursdays, every Thursday at 3 p.m., it's also shown. And um, you'll be able to see episode one, episode two, and then coming up here probably in the next few weeks, you'll be able to see this episode again if you'd like to watch it over. So um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really grateful to Day TV for uh, allowing us to do that and to keep 
sh um, showing the um, our shows and and um, it's very exciting to be able to uh, share this information with with our community absolutely yeah. so we just want to thank you all thank you all for watching today um, our podcast will now be available on YouTube on the Goodwill Easter Seals page sometime next week we're looking at Wednesday so thank you all for watching and tuning in and we hope that you just stay well and encouraged all right good afternoon and welcome to the Y show podcast where we have our host mr michael mann and myself tamara cantrell both with umadop of dayton um we just aired live our wise uh lesson on cultural and generational di diversity with uh lesson three and the, your host there was miss adina wingfield and gail daffler before we get started into our podcast uh, session that we're going to be talking about generations through history, we're going to share some information that our, each of our organizations is doing in the community and give you the contact information for that should you wish to participate in any of the programming. So for Goodwill Easter Seals, of course, they have the WISE program for senior citizens, and you can contact Ms. Gail Daffler to get information on how you can participate through the Goodwill or see a retaping of the WISE program that just aired today. Um, Goodwill Easter Seals also has the Miami Valley Warm Line, and that's a partnership with the Adamus Board, which provides free and confidential mental and behavioral health peer support services to the community. Um, if you call that not line or know someone to refer, that, refer to that line, you can receive early intervention with emotional support that can prevent a crisis, along with learning about behavioral health and recovery resources available to them in the community. Coming up this Saturday on April 24th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Goodwill Easter Seals is hosting a spring fling. And um, this spring fling is... Uh, as a drive through for you to be able to dispose of any unused medications. Um, so you can join them there to bring any medications that you need to have disposed. And there they'll have the Goodwill Easter Seals, My Valley Prevention Team, Humidop of Dayton, Brightview, South Community, Care Source, FOA, Grow Team, East End Community Service, and Montgomery County Prevention Coalition along with the Montgomery County Adams Board. So feel free to take part in that event, the Spring Fling, April 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley also has a managing stress program where you can check in with yourself, listen to what your mind and body are telling you. It gives you pointers on how to stay healthy. If you want information about that program that's in the spring, you can visit Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley website. Some programming that Yuma Dop of Dayton is partaking in is the Ohio Violence Prevention Program. And this is a program geared towards youth violence and it increased the awareness um, of violence so that we can counteract environment, environmental risk, which contribute to violent behaviors. Um, through this program, we hope to increase the participants' ability to resolve interpersonal conflicts without the use of violence or drugs. Umadop of Dayton is also partaking in the Creating Lasting Family Connections program. And this program is a comprehensive, comprehensive personal and family strengthening program and is designed to improve personal growth through increasing self-awareness, expression of feelings, and interpersonal communication. In this program, participants will be taught social skills, refusal skills, communication skills, family management, family management, and appropriate alcohol and drug knowledge and beliefs. And of course, we have the WISE program as well, where you can contact myself or Mr. Mann, and you can visit our website, Yuma Adopt of Dayton, to get information on how to sign up for those courses. Okay, so now we're going to get started in on our podcast. Um, with our generation, generations through history. So first we're gonna say what a generation is, and that's typically a group of people born with a certain period of time who shares um, experiences and a distinct worldview. So 
the way we'll do this is we'll talk about the different seven living generations and give some background and then we're going to see have a baby boomers versus millennials little quiz to see between myself and mr man to see who you know comes out on top of that so with the seven living generations that we have the first one is called the greatest generation and they're also known as the gi generation and this generation went from 1901 to 1927 and some things that helped form the GI generation was the Great De Depression, the Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, which um, created new jobs for people, World War II and Pearl Harbor. And Mr. Mann will now share with you some other things, some characteristics about the GI generation. Well, uh, one of the characteristics is they saved the world and built a nation. They are assertive and energetic doers. They're excellent team players. They're community-minded, and marriage is for life with that generation. Divorce and having children out of wedlock were not accepted. They were strong loyalty to their jobs, groups, schools, and etc. All right. So within this generation, too, um, you had the most veterans, and you had more soldiers returning from war with shell shock, which now is now known as the post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, they were known for their community and nation building, for, from infrastructure like interstates to the rise of the suburban middle class. Um, it was, this generation was the largest leap in educational attainment in the U.S. history from oldest member to the youngest member. Um, and this generation is also known for creating modern America from sheer force um, in their decades of hard work. Now we'll go on to the next generation, which is called the Silent Generation, and they're also known as the Lucky Few. And this generation was, they were born between the years of 1928 and 1945. And some events that helped shape this generation was post-war or your American dream, the Korean War, the space race and moon landing, McCarthyism, and that's when they were trying to outdo communism, the Cold War and bomb shelters. Mr. Mann will now share some information about things that went on during the silent generation. Well, they were avid readers, especially newspapers. Retirement meant to sit in a rocking chair and live your final days in peace. In that era, they had the big band, swing music generation, strong sense of transgenerational common values and near absolute truths, discipline, self-sacrificing, and they were very cautious. Okay. For this generation, um, they were count trying to counter the generation before them. So they believed in working with the government in a system rather than against the government. Um, this generation can also be described as grave and fatalistic, and they were the ones who polarized the idea of midlife crisis. And during this time, divorces became normalized. Um, this generation had a higher employment rate than um, the, gener the greatest generation and baby boomers who preceded them but 88% of women still were not in the workforce, and the average age that they had their children were younger than any other generation. Um, up until now, no member of the silent generation has served as president, but now they have President Joe Biden. So that's about the silent generation. Next, we have the baby boomers, and they were also known as the rock and roll generation or Generation Jones. And our baby boomers were born from 1946 to 1964. And during this time, they had the Vietnam War protests, the Watergate scandal, as well, well as Nixon's resignation, Woodstock, Summer of Love. And during this time period, you had the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert Kennedy. All right, Mr. Mann, can you tell us some things that was happening during the baby boomers time? Yeah, well, I know some of it was like buy now and use credit. Optimistic, driven, team-oriented, envision technology and innovation as requiring a learning process, tend to be more positive about authority, 
one of the largest generations in history with 77 million people. The, the American youth culture that began with them is now ending with them and their activism uh, began to reemerge. All right. So the baby boomers was considered the largest generation before the millenniums. And in 1999, they reached their peak having 78.8 million people. Um, but now it's the millennials who's the largest generation. Um, 2016 may have been the last presidential election where baby boomers and previous generations cast majority of votes. Um, during this time, there was a time of sexual revolution and the birth control pill was approved by the FDA in 1960. And from this, people noticed that there was a sharp decline in women remaining virgins until after marriage. Um, also, this was a time where drinking, marijuana, and illicit drug use were used more um, in generations w uh, within their youth. And can I add one more thing, Ms. Tamara? Mm -hmm. they were all, we were also, because I'm a baby boomer, the first, <laughs> the first TV generation, the first divorce generation where divorce was beginning to be accepted, accepted as a tolerable reality. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about all right, so next we have Generation X, and they're also known as uh, Gen X. And um, Generation X was born between 1965 and 1980. Some things that sh happened during this time period was the fall of the Berlin Wall, the end of the Cold War. You had the AIDS crisis during this period, and also MTV and music videos was introduced during this generation. All right, can Mr. Bain, can you tell us some other things that happened with Generation X? Yeah, they wanted to save the neighborhood, not necessarily the world. They felt misunderstood or feel misunderstood by other generations. Don't feel like a generation, but they are. Society and thus individuals are envisioned as disposable. School problems were about drugs. All right. Generation X um, is a, was is considered our middle generation. They're squeezed between two large generations, which are the baby boomers and the millenniums. Um, gener Gen Xers generally don't attend, uh, they don't consider themselves to be um, unique from other generations. Um, in this generation, women were formally educated. More, more, you have more women being educated formally educated than men, I'm sorry. 55% um, of startup founders were Gen Xers. Um, this generation is also stereotyped as being slackers, saying that they're aimless, unmotivated, and more interested in pop culture, thus the music videos and MTV was introduced. However, they had a less traditional adulthood, but not necessarily less successful. Um, it's said that this generation has the most personal debt. All right, so move. Uh, and I'd like to add one other thing, too. Uh, uh, in the readings that I found, Ms. Tamara, they said this generation is also self-absorbed and suspicious of all other generations, survivors as individuals, cautious, skeptical, unimpressed with authority, and self-reliant. I think that sounds about right. I have a brother who's a Gen Xer. <laughs> All right, so moving on, um, we have millennials, a.k.a. Gen Y. I'm considered a millennial myself. And we were born between 1981 and 1997. Um, some things that happened during my, this generation was 9-11, the Obama election, of uh, the Great Recession, and the rise of global Internet. Mr. May, can you tell some other things that's going on with millennials? Yeah. Millennials, they schedule everything. They feel enormous academic pressure. They feel like a generation and have great expectations for themselves. They prefer to work in teams. They have unlimited access to information and tend to be assertive with strong views. All right, so um, in 2016, the millennials overtook the baby boomers as the largest living generation, and we're projected to meet, reach our peak in 2036 with 81.8, 81, I'm sorry, 81.1 million people. 
Um, in comparison to other generations, millennials are less likely to participate in marriage, religion, and political parties. We are the parents of the alpha generation. Um, this generation, you see more one-child families. Um, this generation is twice as likely to have never been married than members of the silent generation at the same age. Millennials are considered to be less religious but are still as spiritual as previous generations. Millennials entered the workforce during the Great Recession and still viewed their economic futures more positively than older generations. Um, in 2015, millennials surpassed Gen X to become the largest population in the American workforce. In this generation, you have more people who identify as LGBT than any other generation. All right, so then we move on to Generation Z, and they're also called the Founders, iGen, Homeland Generation, Post, Plurals, and Regen. Gen Z was born between 1998 and 2010. Some things that happened during this generation was global terrorism, the Trump election, Brexit, social media nativists, and YouTube digital content was introduced. Uh, can you share with some other things about Gen Z? Uh, yes, I can. 61% of children 8 to 17 have televisions in their room. 35% have video games. 14% have DVD players or now more modern uh, uh, activities in the room. So, you know, I'm a baby boomer. I'm not sure of all the <laughs> fancy things uh, that they have. Uh, and um, they um, are ages, some of them are ages between 8 and 12 years old. And they are an estimated 29 million uh, between uh, 2009 and forward. Okay. All right. Gen Z is predicted to be more hardworking and anxious than millennials due to growing up post 9-11 in a recession world. Um, this will be the first generation to not remember a time without the internet, smartphones, or social media. Um, this generation will be known to um, grow up with a black president, same-sex marriages, and because of this, they feel it's a constitutional right, and they're more likely to take social issues for granted. Gen Z lives in an increasingly multiracial and multicultural world and find it less of an issue than previous generations. Um, you can best compare Gen Z to the silent generation because both of them grew up in the difficulties and aftermath of economic and political turmoil. Um, this generation is more likely to have entrepreneurship than any other generation before. And then the last generation that we're going to talk about is called Generation Alpha, or AKA Gen Tech. They're digital natives, and they were born between 2011 and uh, it will end in 2025. Um, so, Mr. Ben. We, we don't have much information about the alpha generation because they're still developing and they'll be, their generation will be ended in 2025 and we'll have something new, which who knows what that'll be like. But some things that's predi uh, predicted about the gen alpha, alpha gen, is they're more formally educated because of the technology at their disposal. This will be the first generation to be born entirely in the 21st century. Um, they're predicted to be the wealthiest generation in history in terms of global wealth. Um, in this generation, space flight will become a reality. And for this t uh, topic, space flight, this really began with the greatest generation, but it started off as a dream with them. Um, a little bit of statistics is as we talk about generational differences and multicultural differences. This is the rise of interracial marriages in the past decade has led to 50% of 50% increase in multiracial youth. So as we progress on and talk about how we have cultural differences, it's becoming more like they're becoming more emerged together. Um, also, 
by 2042, the racial minority groups will no longer make up um, the majority of the population. So you'll you'll see those things start winning out as culturals start emerging together. All right, so for that, that's all we have about the generations through history. So now we're going to, since I myself am a millennial and Mr. Man is a baby boomer, we're going to talk about some differences just between baby boomers and millennials. Okay, so uh, just so on researching, first thing I wanted to talk about uh, with the baby boomers that we are individuals born between 1946 and 1964. All right, and so millennials are individuals born between 1982 and 2004. Okay, so also for baby boomers, our use of technology is significantly low with baby boomers because we didn't have all this fancy stuff that y'all had today, and I'll talk about that, tell you why we had more fun uh, later on as we go down the line, Ms. Tamara. Okay, all right, so for millennials are technology savvy and they're a generation who uses technology products heavily. Okay, and uh, for the roles of women, in, in, in our generation of baby boomers, and I can look at my mother and some of my other family members as example, women were encouraged to embrace their roles as wives and mothers with limited focus on their careers. So most, most of the time women were, you know, just um, raised their kids, took care of them, made sure they ate, got to school, those things. All right, and so for millennials, uh, women were increasingly pursuing education and career goals. So you have a difference in the role of the women and the use of technology as the big differences between baby boomers and millennials. All right, and so I took a little quiz, and I was going to quiz Mr. Mann on how well do you know each generation. I scored a two out of five, so... Mr. Man, are you up for the challenge with the millennials versus baby boomers? I'm ready. I'm up for the challenge. All right, let me get to this quiz real quick. Okay, so the first question is, are your parents, your roommates, you could be part of a generation trend. Members of which generation were the most likely to live with their parents when they were 25 through 37? Was it the millennials, the Generation X, or baby boomers? Generation X. The Generation X. That one is actually millennials. I thought so. Okay. <laughs> So this next one was, who are the adults in the room? According to the U.S. Census Bureau, which generation had the nation's largest adult population in 2019? 2019, millennials. Yep, that is correct. All right, and what year are Gen Xers expected to outnumber baby boomers? Twenty nineteen or twenty twenty one? No, this gener uh Gen Xers won't outdo baby boomers. It'll be the millennials. Okay. Yeah. Dang, I think I only got one. All right. So number four. The United States has been called a melting pot, but there's one generation in particular that is more demographically diverse than the others. What is the most racially and ethnically diverse generation? Well, 48% identifying as white, white um, as non-white. Generation Z, millennials, Generation X, or baby boomers? It's got to be our group, baby boomers. It's Generation Z. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're the most uh, diverse group. And the final one, as of 2016, which generation was the wealthiest overall as measured by media household wealth? Was it the millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, or the silent generation? Millennials. That one was, yep, that's correct. That's the millennials. Okay. All right. All right. So let me, here's something. I want to tell you how baby boomers 
have had more fun in their life than millennials. And we can debate about it. I'm, first, I'm going to talk about some of the games uh, that we had. Uh, we had games like hide and seek, hopscotch, four corners, dodgeball, jacks, bolo ball, jump, ro jump rope, red light, green light, and I can name some others. You probably never even heard of any of those games. We had Red Rover, Hopscotch, Four Square. I think that's pretty much it. Okay, and then, <laughs> so I also um, wanted to know if you're, I know you may have heard of it, I may have seen it in your home, but I live this in my household. Uh, I'm a baby boomer, and in my household, I can remember having a record player. And on that record player, it played vinyl, 33s in the third, and then we had 45s. And in order for those 45s to play, it played one whole song, then it would drop down, and then it would play another song. That's the kind of music I came up with. What about you? We had cassette tapes. You had cassette tapes? Cassette tapes and CDs. Okay, well then that means I don't even have to talk about <laughs> eight, eight tracks. You probably never even heard about eight tracks that we had in the car. Uh, also, with our TVs, we had black and white TVs. And on our black and white TVs, at 12 o'clock, that TV would go off. And I think, it will, I'm going to say maybe two stations, and then it was three stations. Channel 2, Channel 7, and then maybe another station came in. And at 12 o'clock, it wasn't no watching TV all night. Is at 12 o'clock... The national anthem would play, and that TV would go off, and it may come back on again at 6 in the morning. What about you? Uh, I can remember having a few stations, unless we had cable, and I can remember having antennas, but um, I think TV stayed on a little bit later. The only thing I remember cutting off was music videos. Right. We also had uh, picture tubes in our TV. We don't know nothing about no flat screens or anything like that. Well, I think my mom was always growing up she's talking about floor model color TVs. Right. Well, she she was good once if she got a color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. So we had to also we had we had to go to the store for a lot of things, but we had milk delivery, a milkman that came out and delivered us. We had papers were delivered in the Dayton area twice a day. Dayton Daily News and General Herald, uh, those were delivered twice a day. Also. We had a hostess man that used to come around on a hostess truck uh, with baked goods uh, in our area, something that y'all probably didn't have to experience. Nah, we went to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Right. And what else was, oh, I'll tell you something else I was thinking about last night that I thought was really, really good. We didn't have to spend a lot of money for food or candies anyway. They had penny candies back then, jawbreakers, chuckles, candy cigarettes and you could chew them or they would blow smoke. So I think they were trying to get us to start smoking way back then. Uh, Boston Baked Beans, Laffy Taffy, Jolly Ranchers, Fruity Turtles, Sugar Babies, and the Bazooka Bubble Gums, and they also had comics in them. Yeah, I remember the Bazooka Joe gum, um, Jolly Rancher Sticks, Laffy Taffy's, uh, Fruity Tooties, and it was... The Jolly Ranchers, we had five cent and ten cent candy. And then I did see an increase, though, as I got in high school, so it wasn't five cent or ten cent anymore. And also the 25 cent bags of chips, they now are 55 cent, I think. Right, I think something. they may have been five cent when, we, when I was growing up. Also, uh, on our phones, we had rotary phones back then, not, this, not the technology that people have today and probably not the technology that you have. We had rotary phones. And do you know what a party line is? No, it was a party we line. We also had a party line. So we shared that phone with somebody else. So we may pick the phone up and somebody else was on the phone and we had to wait on them to get off. I think it must have been cheaper back then. It was rotary phone and we had party line. And we also had operators. Oh, also, I'll tell you something else we had about phones. Phone booths. I remember phone booths. Um, 
and the car, I can remember you paid 25 cents to make a phone call, but we grew up where it was time like we had to pager, and then if somebody paid you, you go to the phone booth. And then eventually, by the time that I was a senior, that's when um, I remember cell phones being out. Right, and, I, and I also, uh, Tamara, I want to thank like my Facebook friends because they gave me a lot of this information I'm using today. Uh, also, have you heard of anything, just, did your parents, because I know it had to be your parents, not you, <laughs> said, or grandparents, say anything about street lights? Have you ever heard of anything about street lights for our generation? For my brother, I can remember she was used to call him in and say before the street lights, but he's a Gen Xer, so. Okay, because when we were coming up in my neighborhood, most of us, when the street lights came on, you knew that you better be home or heading home, right? So that was that was an, that was another thing. And then on Sundays, Sundays we did something on Sundays in our generation. If it was we, in our family, we did it almost every day. But for sure on Sundays, we all ate together, went to church together, ate together. Yeah, we had Sunday dinners, but. Now it, I can see how it's getting away from that because everybody's become busy in the hustle and bustle of working and business and stuff. But every Sunday we had Sunday dinner. Okay. Yeah. And, and something that I really hated, I don't know I, that I got more than, well, I got more than my share. But teachers, when I was going to school, they could paddle you for no. disciplinary actions. Mm -mm. No, we didn't have paddling. Y'all didn't have that in y'all generation. No, we didn't have no patents. Also, uh, cigarette smoking was uh, a thing. If you, uh, they had a lot of cigarette commercials on TV, and uh, I used to watch the older guys. Couldn't wait to smoke because I thought it was, you know, you was growing up and you was cool if you were smoking, especially if you could blow circles. Yeah, I think for my generation, even though I wasn't a smoker, um, black and milds was a thing. I seen a lot of people doing the black and mild cigars. And stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what what about drive-ins? I remember the Dixie Drive-In, going to the Dixie Drive-In as a kid. Well, we had drive-ins all over as, as, as kids. And somebody sent, sent me something saying it was waste parties. And I think I remember that. They used to have those in the basements when I was growing up. And they if they were charged, they would charge you based on the measurement around your waist. I ain't, never you never saw that. That. I ain't never saw that. I never saw that. Right. So they used to have that. Um, and we, I talked about the vinyl records. Uh, we were a generation that dressed a lot. Dressing was important. So our parents would always make sure that we went. Because we went to school. When I went to school, young ladies could not wear pants. Mm. They could not wear pants. They had to wear dresses when I went to school. So what about you? Yeah, we wore our pants. We wore our pants to school. I think for my generation, um, college was a big thing. Like graduating high school and going to college, that was a big thing for my generation. Right, and again, as we said earlier, I think a lot of mothers stayed at home. Uh, we played in, uh, games in the backyard. Uh, our neighborhoods weren't as mobile as the neighborhoods today. In the neighborhood I grew up in, I knew everybody in my immediate neighborhood. They know, knew me. And for some reason, I want to say my parents probably gave them permission to give me a little tap if they saw me do something wrong and send me back down the street. No, I, I didn't grow up where um, they, I had heard of it, but I think certain areas and stuff like that, but it was more so they would tell your parents if you done something. And then depending on your parents, and you be whether you get in trouble or not. Some kids didn't get in trouble for nothing. Right. Well, there's a couple other things I just want to cover uh, to show you why we were the greatest generation. We didn't have to go to the beauty shop spending money all the time, or my sisters and them didn't because my mother had something that you probably never seen before, especially put on your head, a hot comb. I seen a hot comb before, but we use electric combs now. Okay, well, hot comb. Well, yeah. yeah. Hot comb. And, With that uh, grease and uh, that comb on the stove. I remember those. Right. Our, but, now, but I think we grew up during a time, too, where people started using relaxers, so you didn't have to do that anymore. Okay, well, then back then we didn't have relaxers. That hot comb. <laughs> I used to watch my sisters and them squinching up. Yeah. Right. Also, we had, uh, we had sodas and our pops. We called them pops here in Dayton. And at that time... We used to keep the glass pop bottles because you could cash them in 
to get money on them. So a lot of us used to collect them around the railroad tracks. I growing up, or at least I did, and people who probably didn't have a lot of money, like I thought we were, we were growing up, uh, we um, uh, were able to go cash those pop bottles. And we didn't have no bus picking us up for school. We walked to school every day, elementary school and high school, in my neighborhood. Some people may have been different. Yeah, we had cans, wasn't big on glass. Um, I was a walker to school, but it, they changed it. I think if you lived within a two-mile radius of the school, you was a walker. But if you lived over two miles, then you caught the bus. So most of the time, we I lived close to my school, so I did walk to school. But a lot of my friends caught the bus or rode the city bus through high school to school. And one other thing uh, before uh, we get ready to close, Ms. Tamara, the... Uh, baby booming generation, I think that we are a lot more active than the generation before us uh, because I I can remember my grandparents, or at least the ones that were living as I was growing up, being in their 70s, and it seemed like I always saw them on the, uh, on the porch in a rocking chair, uh, relaxing, and uh, our generation of baby boomers, we're still active, you know, dancing, line dancing, exercising, and stuff like that. And we didn't know anything when I was growing up about no daggone air conditioners. Our air conditioners was a fan and the window open at night. No, we got central air units now. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so things have really, really, really changed a lot. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing about it is I think that all generations find things that we can look back on and the fun that we had. Yeah, um, that's most definitely true, especially since everyone is starting, like all these cultures are starting to merge together in the different movements that takes place. So um, there was, and the information that we read was from BuzzFeed, and they also left us with something saying that your generation doesn't define you. It's the unique actions that you take within your generation. So I think that's true, too. Right. right. So I want to uh, uh, thank you, Tamara, uh, for, you know, uh, having this little battle of the generation <laughs> with me. Uh, we want to thank, thank our audience uh, for listening in. All right. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you.